SnapDeck IT is the expert go-to resource for all things CMMC. Education, certification, preparation, and ongoing managed IT. Manage, secure, grow. Check it out at snaptechit.com. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of 123 CMMC. My name is Dana and I will be your host. And our guest today is Sean Brown. Hello, Sean, how are you? I am good, Dana, how are you been? It's been a long Hi. time since we've chatted. Yes, it has, yes it has. So it's nice to see you again. Yeah, you as well. We have a very exciting topic we're gonna to talk about today. <laughs> Always, who, who is not excited to talk about you know, CMMC <laughs> and, and costing, so. Uh, Yep. CMMC and overall cybersecurity cost containment. All right. So our first question will be, what are the most critical pieces of the puzzle when thinking about budgeting for CMMC certification? Yeah, that's a good question. We get that, you know, quite a bit. There's lots of factors that go into it. Um, you know, some of the things to kind of think about as you st kind of start this journey, it's the you know, size of your organization, number of locations you have, you know, how complex is your network and your environment? Uh, do you have, you know, like I said, those multiple locations? Do you, do you, you know, where all do you have CUI data in your environment? Is there ways to kind of, you know, is it everywhere? Or is it in certain areas or certain business units? So there's a lot of factors like that that go in. Um, just how much you know, control unclassified information do you handle and how many people handle that? That all is um, kind of pieces to that puzzle. Uh, a couple other things, you know, what internal IT support resources do you have? You know, are you, are you going to need help with that? Are you going to be able to do it inside? So in, internal. So those are, you know, some other kind of pieces. Uh, capacity and knowledge of your internal team will play a factor in that as well. Whether or not you're, regardless of the level you're doing or whether or not you're doing self-assessment or, you know, full-blown, um, you know, kind of audit. Um, what's the current state of your IT systems? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, how old is your equipment? All of that will, you know, is, you know, again, pieces to this, you know, kind of big puzzle. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we kind of think about is what's your starting point? Where, where are we at from, you know, where are we going to start this at um, and how far along the journey, you know, do we have to go? Uh, all that will play, um, play a big component of it. Identifying, you know, as you do that, you know, you'll kind of identify those kind of current security gaps to figure out, you know, what controls still need to be implemented in the environment. Um, and, you know, Again, this is this is a long term plan and, and a uh, and a journey that you're going to go on. And so understanding kind of what level, uh, you know, one, two or three you need to be on also will play uh, a factor in, in figuring out budgeting for uh, for your CMMC certification. So. All right. Well, that ties into our next question. So how does SnapTech IT approach budgeting for an IT roadmap that includes CMMC certification? Yeah. And again, so all of those factors that we just talked about all kind of play into, you know, us whenever we're doing this kind of kind of IT roadmap and budgeting mm -hmm. with people. So we like to factor in all that. A couple of the other things that, you know, I'll just kind of point out too that we like to understand kind of where the business is going. So are there um, big initiatives that are going to double the business in three years uh, or you know, do we have that kind of 10 year or five year or three year or whatever your, you know, futuristic version of the organization from a vision and strategy standpoint? Uh, we like to understand that um, so that we can help plan uh, the technology and whatever kind of controls and systems need to be in place uh, for that. So, again, it kind of ties back into that puzzle piece that we kind of talked about before, but mm -hmm. but that kind of goes into that that kind of road mapping, just kind of understanding where the business is going. Mm -hmm. We also need to understand what, you know, what's critical in the business. Um, understanding, you know, critical systems, you know, critical solutions. If, if you tell me, um, hey, this is all important, but this one area of the business is vitally important, that all goes into, you know, helping kind of lay out that kind of roadmap and, and plan for that as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then, you know, like I said, just kind of understanding business and just your kind of goals and, and what level of CMMC you want to achieve or you need to achieve in your organization all factor into uh, developing that, that roadmap and that plan with you. All right. Well, that sounds good. Yep. Okay. So now what everybody's talking about is 2.0. So how do the recent CMMC 2.0 program updates affect the cost of securing CMMC certification? Yeah. So boy, did they make some big changes from uh, 1.0 to 2.0. And honestly, I think a lot of the changes that they made uh, make a lot of sense. You know, like, I don't know if we ever talked to anybody that was like, yeah, we're going after level two or four. And so <laughs> it kind of made sense, <laughs> you know, kind of to combine those down into to three different levels now. Mm -hmm. So I think that all made a lot of sense. Uh, but as it relates to just kind of cost savings, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, in level one and in some cases, level two, um, can do annual self-assessments now. And so from a cost saving standpoint, they're no longer going to have to hire that CMMC auditor to come in um, and do the actual audit with them. Um, and, and I don't know if I ever saw a specific amount, but, you know, everybody kind of assumed that that was a, a five to $10,000 kind of audit. Uh, so depending on your level of CMMC, you just saved yourself, we'll call it five to $10,000 because of the new rules around self-assessments. Um, so I think that's a, a big thing that um, is going to, you know, definitely save a lot of contractors, you know, upfront, you know, kind of cash and capital through this process. Um, the other thing that I think helps save some of the, um, you know, some cost saving things is we've eliminated, I think, around 20 controls uh, that used to be in CMMC 1.0 when they went to 2.0. And now we're just focused on um, the NIST 800, 171, 110 controls. So that kind of simplified and reduced some of the scope. And so that, in a sense, is going to help reduce some of the cost, not only in auditing, but just in preparing um, you know, for either your self-audit and just getting those uh, controls and requirements kind of satisfied. So those all will play a factor in kind of reducing, you know, cost from 1.0 to 2.0, which mm -hmm. I think those were a lot of good changes that they made. Yeah, I, th I think they, they had to make them. So they, yeah. they There's, yeah. There was just not enough auditors to go right. handle the amount of work that they were talking about, um, yeah. you know, requiring. It was, it was just not going to be feasible. Yeah, we have to remember, even if you're just self-assessing, you have to make sure that you are self-attestation, that you are doing what you're saying you're doing. Yeah, you're saying is, you're yeah, on that. yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, just because they removed the requirements of the audit doesn't mean that you um, don't have to do it and don't right. have to right. adhere to these because because you, you're right. You're the, the executive team is going to put their name on the line and say, yes, we are doing this. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I, I am. I am putting my name on this document that says that we are. So, mm -hmm. yep. Like the hot potato. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our next one. So are there any specific cost containment measures that can be taken at level two and three under CMMC now mm -hmm. under 2.0? Yeah, and so we mentioned one just a minute ago, but in certain situations, some contracts at level two now are going to be able to self-assess if you're not handling some of that critical national security information. Um, so great cost savings there. Uh, you'll just need to figure out um, if you fall under that you know, kind of classification or not. Um, and then the other thing that I'll kind of point out is DOD is going to allow contractors to use a POAM now, that plan of action and milestone, and still receive contracts while they're working to achieve compliance. And mm -hmm. so that's going to be a, a, a not necessarily a, a cost containment thing, but you're still going to be able to get contracts and continue to bid and work on um, some DOD uh, projects. Um, even though you fully haven't gone either through the self-assessment or a real assessment by leveraging that kind of plan of action and milestone. Now, 
What DOD is going to do though, is they are going to identify a baseline number of requirements that you're going to have to adhere to. So you're not going to be able to pick and choose and to, to a full degree and just implement whatever you want to implement. There'll be a baseline requirement and things that they will allow you to kind of put on that POAM and certain things that are just going to be a requirement that you're not going to be able to, to put into a, um, into a POAM. So, uh, but that's a big, that's a big deal. That's a big change. Um, the other thing that I kind of point out to kind of think about too, and um, I kind of meant to mention this earlier, um, I kind of did a little bit, but from a, from a cost containment standpoint, um, you might be able to, to not focus on your entire network, uh, but kind of work on segmenting your network into maybe sections or divisions that handle that CUI um, will also kind of help play into some of that cost containment um, at a level two and level three, you know, just kind of reducing the amount of scope and exposure that you have. Mm -hmm. All right, that was good stuff. Yeah, those changes that they made, those there, there's a lot of cost savings there. And with the POEM, I think is something that they, I think they thought they had to kind of put in there, but so they did, so it's just good. So yeah, like, that's this right. Is what have to be doing. All right, sure. our next. Step. So how does a holistic approach to addressing cybersecurity lead to cost savings for businesses seeking CMMC and looking to strengthen their overall cybersecurity posture? Boy, what a great long question that one is, right? <laughs> that is a long one. <laughs> um, so I tell you, whenever I think about this, uh, my mind always goes into a couple of different directions. You know, first, um, you know, from a holistic approach, you know, I always like to understand um, you know, the entire kind of playing field or the entire requirements and kind of, you know, going back to doing that assessment, understanding kind of where we are, where we've got gaps, you know, so planning, budgeting, kind of understanding kind of where you're at in that journey. Um, I like to see the whole picture and understand kind of what do we, what is it that we got to go tackle? And so understanding it from, you know, the whole picture um, to me, helps kind of um, plan and, and, and put that into um, almost, I don't want to say like bite-sized chunks, but definitely prioritize and address the most critical, you know, controls and aspects of it. Um, and so I think from a holistic standpoint, kind of understanding everything that you need to get implemented and where those gaps are and kind of planning that out, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, also from just kind of a, a cost saving standpoint, you know, just as it relates to, you know, cybersecurity in general, you know, I, I tell people you know, all the time that, you know, if you think IT security is expensive, you should try cheap IT or non-existent IT security and see how much a true incident is going to cost you. So, um, you know, if we're, if we're talking about cost savings, doing it the right way, you know, maybe expensive in the, you know, developing processes and solutions and putting different tools and things like that in place. But uh, the cost of a security incident, I promise you, will be a lot more painful uh, than doing it, you know, the right way kind of up front. Um, mm -hmm. That's for sure. And, you know, and, and kind of related to that, you know, as it relates to, you know, holistic approach and kind of cost savings, um, if you were to get hit, think about the cost of, you know, contracts that you may lose, you know, reputation, um, you know, downtime, employee morale. There's it goes on and on and on, um, and so understanding it from a holistic approach and 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 kind of understanding your plays and your, your playbook and where you're at and where you need to be, um, I think makes it simpler. To, uh, to adhere to and kind of get to where you want to be, so. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of proactive thinking goes a long yeah. way when something yeah. does happen, so. That's yeah, absolutely. All right, so here's our next one. The DOD is looking to provide incentives for contractors and subcontractors to move forward with CMMC certification under 2.0. Has there been any word on what those incentives would look like? Yeah, I, uh, I've heard some rumors and there's some things out there. Um, you know, I would say nothing is concrete. One of the one of the things that, that I've heard is that um, 
that they may award um, and allow you to take a little bit higher profit if you've gone through this process and, and are providing and can demonstrate that you've got a, a secure network. Um, and so that is the only real kind of incentive that I've heard about thus far. There may be others out there that I just haven't heard, but that was one of the ideas that, that we've heard kind of fluttered around. So nothing concrete yet? Not yet. Okay. Stay tuned. Stay mm -hmm. tuned. All right. What other insight can you leave us for our audience when it comes to cost containment for CMMC as well as cybersecurity as a whole? Sure. Yeah. And so um, I would just say, you know, CMMC is um, 2.0 made a lot of great changes from 1.0. And, you know, the, the things that they did around self-assessment, I think, is going to help save a lot of companies a lot of money. Um, as it were, as it kind of relates to the auditing portion of it, but it's to me now it's a lot more clear on where the government and kind of DOD is heading with this, and they are absolutely have a line, you know, two dot oh directly with that NIST eight hundred one seventy one hundred and ten requirements. So there's really no need to wait. You know, there was some. It was up in the air maybe a little bit about what was going to happen in 1.0. I think it's pretty clear now where they're landing. And so there's really no need to wait. Go ahead and start looking at um, you know, the 800, 171, 110 requirements. Um, go ahead and start doing your assessments and gap analysis and understanding kind of where you're at and take a look at, you know, um, the roadmap stuff and a, a number of those kind of factors that we talked about, you know, earlier in, in, in this kind of you know, talk. Um, but it's coming, you know, I, I, I think they've, like I said, I think they've kind of settled in on, on where they, where those requirements are going to be. There's, you know, a lot of good documentation, a lot of good resources out there. Thanks to people like you that are doing a great job of educating uh, around this topic. And so, you know, the, the time is over for waiting. It's time to mm -hmm. take it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, even if they do make some more changes, all of the basic stuff that's just good cyber hygiene and their good business practices for protecting data, yep. that's stuff that everybody should be doing anyway. And I think we're going to see, you know, this more and more spilling over to, to all businesses everywhere. But um, yeah. so that's something to get started with. Hopefully you already already doing that. But even if you're not, there's, you know, that's good. That's not going to change. So get cracking on the, uh, the basic stuff. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's good. Good advice. All right. Well, that was a lot of fun and thank you for all your in information, Sean. It was nice to see you again. Yeah, you as well. All right. We'll see you again soon. Definitely. Thank you everybody for watching and listening and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Yeah.